Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. It is currently 3 a.m. at night on May 28th, and I'm currently recording. I couldn't sleep, so fuck it. Um, this video is going to be who I would have voted for in every single presidential race. Yep, every single one of them. How many are there? I think there's like 57. There's uh, 58. It's 58. I was one off. But this is who I would vote for in every single election if I was eligible to vote. And this is without mindset, if I kept very similar uh, policy, uh, if I supported similar policy as I do now. So let's take a look. Uh, in 1788, no surprise, I would have voted for George Washington. Same thing in 1792. There's really no uh, debate on this one. In 1796, I would have voted for Thomas Jefferson over John Adams. He drafted the Declaration of Independence, and he also wanted to fight piracy, which was a big problem for American trade back in the 1700s, or back in the 1790s, early 1800s, and so that's something that Jefferson wanted to do that Adams didn't. 1800, uh, again, I'd vote for Jefferson. He was heavily against the Alien and Sedition Acts, which is why I would have wanted to vote for him over John Adams again. 1804, I would have uh, voted for Jefferson for a third time. He dropped the national debt by $26 million. He repealed the Alien and Sedition Acts. There was the first Barbary War, which he set out to do what he wanted to do. There was also the Louisiana Purchase, and he also formed alliances with Native American tribes, which is all things I like. 1808, I would have voted for James Madison over Charles Pinckney. He did support the Cuban embargo, which is something I do also, I did would have also supported. However, in 1812, I would have voted against Madison in favor of Dewitt Clinton. Due to the uh, War of 1812, I would have been one of the very few Democratic Republicans who would have opposed the War of 1812. Uh, but I would have supported Clinton in this uh, in this scenario. 1816, I would have voted for James Monroe. He was better than Rufus King. And I would have voted for James Monroe a lot more willingly in 1820 due to the era again feelings, as well as there being major infrastructure improvements in between 1816 and 1820. Going in 1824, this might be controversial, but I would have voted for Andrew Jackson. He's a protectionist, a populist, he's a war hero, and he's very anti-establishment, a lot of things that I kind of like. Uh, going in 1828, I would have voted for Jackson again, same reasons as before, but add John Adams being a corrupt president, as well as there being a bad economy. 1832, voted for Jackson again, just as uh, willingly as the last two times. There was a great economy, he made the national debt zero, and he was against a second national bank. There are a lot of flaws with Jackson, but... You know, I he was better than the guys he were running against. 1836, Willie Magnum, who was the North Carolina senator. I would have voted for this guy in 1836 just on the basis of there being a state bias. That's it. Literally the only reason. 1840, I would have voted for the my very first third-party candidate in 1840, and that being James Burney, who would be the Liber Liberty Party nominee. He's an activist. He's very anti-slavery. And there's also a bad Van Buren economy, and I really... Don't and William Harrison doesn't really appeal to me. He seems very boring, mushy establishment guy. Going on to 1844, James Polk, a Tennessee senator, he supported Texas annexation, and John Tyler, who was a president I do like, supported James Polk. So of course I'm going to support Polk, but he does have a lot of good other policy ideas. Going on to 1848, another third party candidate, Garrett Smith, anti-slavery activist, philanthropist, and Liberty Party nominee. So, 8048, I don't really care for either Tyler, Cass, Taylor, Cass, or Van Buren, so I vote for the third party guy. Going on to 1842, 1852, we have John P. Hale, a New Hampshire congressman at the time. He was very anti-slavery and was also against the Missouri Compromise. This is a third party. I think it was Franklin Pierce and Winfield Scott this election, and I really don't care for either one of them, so I would vote third party here. 1856, I would support the Republican John C. Vermont, who was the California senator. He was very anti-slavery. James Buchanan's another boring establishment guy, and I really wouldn't care too much for Millard Fermore. I would remember him as being a weak president. And going to 1860, since I couldn't vote for Lincoln, since I live in North Carolina, he was off the ballot in North Carolina, I would support John Bell, the Constitutional Union nominee. He was a Tennessee senator. He supported unity and was also very anti-slavery. However, he was a compromiser, uh, but he stuck to his beliefs. So I think if he was elected, we probably would have found a way to end slavery whilst not going through a civil war.
going on to uh, I, there was no 1864 election because the North Carolina was in the Confederacy at that point and didn't vote. So sad. In, 19, in 1868, I would have supported Ulysses Grant, the first election where I would have held my nose and voted for someone uh, just because of the Republican victory in the Civil War or the North Northern Republican victory in the Civil War. I kind of have to support this guy. Uh, he supported black suffrage, he supported citizenship for blacks, and he also supported a radical reconstruction, all things I would have supported. 1872, I would have voted for Grant. Again, like, I want, like, another one I'd hold my nose up, more so now than four years ago, because, you know, he hasn't gotten anything done, as well as a corrupt administration, but I didn't really care for Horace Greeley either. And 19, in 1876, I would have supported the Democrat Samuel Tilden. There was a corrupt Republican administration. He was heavily against carpetbaggers in Congress, and he also supported protection of black citizens, which is something Democrats were pushing at the time. Going on to 1880, I would have supported James Garfield, the congressman from Ohio. He supported the civil service reform, so instead of the spoil system where the Republican, where the president can nominate whoever they want, they can only nominate someone based off merit. So this is something James Garfield supported and he's also very intelligent is multilingual is probably the most educated president we've ever had going on to 1884 i would have supported grover cleveland he was the governor of new york he wants to do end corruption in government and has a pro worker mindset and you know how much of a pro worker mindset i have going on to 1888 i would have supported cleveland again he supported statehood for territories especially western territories that we had and he also supported lowering taxes Next up in 1892 was James Weaver, the Iowa congressman who was running under the Populist Party. He has a pro-farmer labor mindset and is also a pro-worker mindset, which is two combinations that I love so much. Going on in 1896, I would have supported William Bryan, the congressman from Nebraska. He's a very passionate speaker, pro-worker mindset, pro-farmer labor mindset, and he also supported the direct election of senators. In 1900, I would have supported William Bryan again, just the same reasons as I would have supported him four years prior. 1904, I would have supported Teddy Roosevelt, the current president. He's a protectionist. He supported increase in trading, and that would have strengthened our alliances with other countries. He supported the gold standard. He supported the direct elections of senators, and he supported recall members of recall to the members of Congress, which is something I think our country needs terribly right now. Going in 1908, I would have voted for William Bryan a third time. I don't like Taft all that much. Even if Teddy Roosevelt was backing him, I have a mind of my own. Don't need a politician to tell me who to vote for. So I would have supported Bryan even though I knew he wouldn't win. In 1912, I would have supported Teddy Roosevelt who was running under the progressive Bull Moose Party. Uh, same reasons as I would have voted for him eight years prior. 1916, I would have supported Charles Hughes, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and the first Republican, actually scratch that, first Republican since uh, 1904, so about 12 years since I voted Republican. Uh, he is the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and it was mostly due to a hatred of Woodrow Wilson, as well as the fact that he had progressive policies that I liked. So I, I don't like Woodrow Wilson at all. I think he's one of the worst presidents ever. Not the worst, but probably one of the worst. In 1920, I would have supported James Cox. Uh, uh, back to Democrats, he's the he would have he's the governor of Ohio. He I did not trust Harding whatsoever. However, Cox supported women's suffrage, and he also supported plans to have a uh, loyalty-based immigration system, which I think is an interesting idea. Going on 1924, I would have flip-flopped again and supported Calvin Coolidge, the president, mostly on the basis of that there was an amazing economy during this time. Going on in 1928, I would support Alf Smith, the governor of New York, uh, mostly due to the fact that he was Catholic, and I am a Catholic, so I would have supported him just based on that basis. Uh, and it would be cool to have the, him as the first Catholic president. But he also supported balanced budgets as well, so there is that. In 1932, I would have supported Franklin Roosevelt. There was the Great Depression under Herbert Hoover, as well as the New Deal program that he was uh, you know, talking about. In 1936, would have voted for Roosevelt for the same reasons as before. In 1940, I would have supported Wendell Wilkie, the businessman, but not because of the whole Roosevelt breaking the two-term tradition. That has nothing to do with that. If it was anyone else, I probably would have supported Roosevelt. Wilkie supported a lot of this news of the New Deal. He's a protectionist as well as an isolationist, which pretty much sums me up a little bit. In 1944, I would have voted for Thomas Dewey, another person I would have held my nose up for. 
just because Franklin Roosevelt implemented the internment camps of Asian Americans, which is not cool. Going in 1948, I would have supported the Progressive Party nominee, Henry Wallace, the former vice president. He was heavily anti-communist. He supported civil liberties. And he also supported the New Deal, as well as several other policies like civil rights. Going on to 1952, Dwight Eisenhower, the U.S. general during the Korean War? No, during World War II, excuse me. He supported the New Deal, and he is very heavily anti-communist. Uh, same reasons as before as to why I would vote for him in 1956. Going on to 1960, uh, there is John Kennedy. I would vote for him, the Massachusetts senator. He supports civil rights. He's a Catholic. He, there is a bad economy during the Eisenhower administration, and he supported us putting funding to go to the moon. In 1964, Lyndon Johnson, again, another, this one I would really hold my nose up for, because it's either him or Barry Goldwater, and I don't care for either, so I guess I'm voting for Johnson. You know, we got to 1968, Hubert Humphrey, the vice president, another candidate, another person I'm holding my nose up for, uh, just because I don't, I wouldn't trust Nixon at all. In 1972, I go back to the third party. As I support the Libertarian Party nominee, John Hospers, who was a philosopher, someone who I think was the best candidate back in 72. Going on in 1976, I would have supported Jim Carter, the governor of Georgia. There is a bad Ford economy, the fall of Seoul, Vietnam, as well as he supported public school funding, he supported tax cuts, he supported social security programs, and he also supported balanced budgets. Going on in 1980, I would have supported Ronald Reagan. He supported tax cuts. There was a bad Carter economy as well as multiple nationwide crises under the Carter administration. Going in 1984, Reagan gets my vote again. That should say president, I'm sorry. There was a great economy as well as low taxes. America was prospering, prospering at this point in time. It was it was a peaceful place, or somewhat peaceful place. you got to remember it was a Cold War. Going in 1988, back to the third parties, I would have supported the Texas Congressman Ron Paul, the Libertarian Party nominee. He was an isolationist. He supported balanced budgets. He was pro-life, and he also supported school choice, things I like. 1992, I would have supported Ross Perot, the independent businessman candidate. He would be very anti-NAFTA. He would support tax cuts, and he also supports balanced budgets. And I would, you know, support him in 1996, again, for the same reasons. In 2000, I would have voted for a Libertarian again, Harry Brown, an author, the best choice. I don't like Bush nor Gore. In 2004, I would have voted for Michael Badnerick, who supports civil disobedience, which is like blocking a road. You know, it's illegal, but it's not, hey, if you're breaking laws but non-violently then you should you know get a slap on the wrist and say hey don't do that again but if you're being if you're breaking the law violently then you should absolutely be given prison time and he's also a phenomenal speaker that if given more airtime he would have you know won a lot more votes over in 2008 Barack Obama I would have supported him there was a bad Bush economy, you know, the Great Recession. He was seen as the isolationist candidate, and he was also a protectionist, or was seen as one. In 2012, I would have gone back to voting for Libertarian Party. I would have voted for Gary Johnson. He supported balanced budgets, tax cuts. He wanted to end the war on drugs, which is something I want to do. He also supports protecting civil liberties, and he has a pro-worker mindset. And my mouth is super dry. In 2016, I would have voted for Donald Trump. I was a Trump guy from day one. Uh, he's pro-worker mindset, he's a protectionist, very anti-establishment, he's pro-LGBT, uh, I will defend that to my death. He supports congressional term limits, and he also supports legalizing weed, which is something he has talked about multiple times. Okay, and now in 2012, I would have supported Trump again. Uh, he, there was a VD spec, speedy vaccination that came out, where a vaccination came out a month after the election. Uh, he also has a he's also pro law enforcement during the whole the rights and everything, and he also is pro secure. He also pro secure borders. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This was uh, kind of tedious. I'm just joking, but I don't know if this will be a very popular video. I know some people were asking for it, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow my Twitter at Chaotic Politics. This is Chaotic One saying peace.